Dear students, I am Professor Y. P. Agarwal, Professor Emeritus, Kurukshetra University, Kurukshetra. This module is concerned with the correlation techniques, and we are going to discuss concepts, computation, and uses in research. And we are going to discuss Pearson's R2. The objectives of this module are to give knowledge of the following. Number one, concept of correlation, calculation of Pearson's R, uses of correlation, correlation and causation, quick interpretation of R. In this module, we are going to look into its various aspects. So far, we have looked into the distribution of a single variable at a time. Very often, however, there is interest in examining as to how variations in one variable are associated with the or related with the variations in another variable. This is called a bivariate situation. For this purpose, we need an index of association or relationship between the two variables. This is known as coefficient of correlation. The coefficient of correlation to be defined is a single number that tells us to what extent two variables or things are related and to what extent variations in one variable go with the variations in the other. Whether two measurements for the same individual can be paired for all the individuals in a group, the degree of relationship between the paired scores is called correlation. For example, a teacher finds that the students have high IQs have secured high marks, and students having low IQs have secured low academic achievement. It shows a definite trend of relationship in the variations of IQs and the three sets of X and Y scores given in table 1 for 10 children. And the scores for the X variable have been ordered from the highest to the lowest and remain uniformly so in all the three A, B, and C situations. Data for the Y variable is arranged in three different ways corresponding to the columns headings A, B, and C. The data in column A shows that each person attains the same score on both variables. The child with the highest X scores has also the highest Y scores. Conversely, the child with the lowest score on X has the lowest scores on Y. Each X score corresponds exactly with the each Y score. This leads to a perfect relationship since an increase in the value of X scores results in the corresponding increase in the Y scores, the direction of the relationship is positive. The scatter plot of set A shown in figure 1 represents the placement of scores along a straight line, which runs from the lower left corner to the upper right hand corner. This correlation coefficient r in this case is equal to plus 1.00. The scores in column B of table 1 show a trend which is exactly opposite to the trend of set A. The person obtaining the highest score on the x variable has the lowest score on the y variable. Conversely, the lowest score on the x variable corresponds to the highest score on the y variable. The positions of other scores have also been reversed in a perfectly systematic way. This is a case of a perfect or maximal correlation but with a negative direction, which runs the scatter plot for set B in figure 1 represents the placement of scores along a straight line, which runs from the lower right hand corner to the upper left hand corner. The correlation coefficient in this case is minus 1. Compare the direction of the straight lines of scatter plot A and scatter plot B. What is the difference? Now, dear students, the difference is that this, the direction of the correlation has changed. This is a this in reverse direction and we call it inverse correlation. 
and hence we will get a value which will be negative value. The scores in column C of table 1 show that it was difficult to find any particular trend of association between the variations in the scores of x and y. The correlation is essentially non-existent. The scatter plot for sect C in figure 1 shows that the scores fall all over the surface of the graph in such a way that change of variation in one variable is unrelated with the other variable. Hence, the value of r is equal to 0, 0, 0.00. Now, we have the second section which is on the product moment correlation. Carl Pearson's product moment coefficient of correlation can be computed by using the definitional formula. The formula for r is r is equal to sigma z x times z y upon n. The student will recall that z or standard scores can be obtained by dividing the deviation scores by standard deviation. Hence, using the paired z scores, the product moment correlation can be defined as the average product of the paired z scores. It can be shown algebraically as the maximum value of the term sigma z x times z y is attained when for each pair of z scores sigma z x is equal to z y. It can also be shown that when the z scores for each pair are identical, the sum of their products equals n. Using standard scores for the calculation of correlation coefficient involves a tedious process. However, several formulas exist which have been derived from the basic definitional formula and involve less labor in computation of R. The process of calculation of R is explained here in table 2. Dear students, table 2 is concerned with the calculation of product moment correlation coefficient by two different formulas the Ra score method and the deviation score method. I am going to explain to you the first method, Ra score method. The formula for the Ra score method is R is equal to n times sigma xy minus sigma x into sigma y upon n times sigma x square minus sigma x whole square times n times sigma y square minus sigma y square whole under root. I have stated the formula. Now, I am going to insert the various values that we have calculated in the table into the formula. 5 times 210 minus 30 times 30 upon 5 times 220 minus 30 whole square times 5 times 226 minus 30 square whole under root. Then it leads me to further calculations which are like this 1015 minus 900 upon 1100 minus 900 minus 1130 minus 900. This further leads me to the calculations 150 upon 200 times 230 whole under root. And the final value that I arrive at is r is equal to 0.7. Now I go back to the second method of calculating product moment r, and this is deviation score method. And the formula for this is r is equal to sigma xy upon sigma x squares times sigma y square whole under root. When I insert the values in the formula, I get 30 upon 40 times 46 whole under root and this leads me to further values 30 upon 42.9 under root and then final value is 0.7 which tallies with the value of 0.7 that we obtained by using the first method of calculating Pearson R. Dear students, we have shown you the steps taken in the calculation of coefficient of correlation by two different methods. 
Now I am once again going to review with you these steps. Number one, calculate squares of each x and y scores as shown in columns three and four. Number two, calculate products of x and y by multiplying the values of columns one and two. Number three, sum up all the columns. Number four, insert the values in the formula. Now, I'm going to review the steps in the second method. That is the deviation score method. Step number one, calculate means of x and y scores. Number two, obtain deviation scores x and y as follows. x is equal to x minus mx and y is equal to y minus my. Number three, obtain squares of deviation scores, column eight and nine. Number four, multiply columns six and seven to obtain xy, column 10. Number five, sum up all columns. Number six, insert the values in the formulas. Students, now we are going to discuss the properties of the correlation coefficient. One of the properties of R we consider is the range of R. The correlation coefficient may assume values from minus 1 through 0 to plus 1. This is inherent in the very formula propounded by Pearson for the calculation of R. The value of R is equal to minus 1 and R is equal to plus 1. Present a case of perfect relationship, though the directional relationship is negative in the first case and positive in the later. The value of R can never be greater than plus 1 and less than minus 1. These are the limits of R. The coefficient of determination R square and coefficient of alienation will be presented. The correlation coefficient R can be interpreted in terms of R square, which is called the coefficient of determination. This may be called as the variance interpretation of R square. When multiplied by 100, the coefficient R square gives us the percentage of variance in Y that is associated with, determined by, or accounted for by variance in X. When R is equal to 0 0.60, the value of R square is equal to 60 square is equal to 0.36. Expressed in terms of percentage, it means that 36 percent, that is 0.36 times 100, is equal to 36 of the variance in Y scores has been accounted for by the variance in X scores. The proportion of the variance in Y not determined by or not associated with the variance in X is given by K square, which is called the coefficient of non-determination. Hence, K square is equal to 1 minus R square. Another index derived from the same is the coefficient of alienation K. K is equal to 1 minus R square whole under root. While R indicates the degree of relationship between two variables, the coefficient of alienation k indicates the degree of lack of relationship. An inspection of table 5 reveals that the coefficient of determination for small r's emphasize the very slight degree of association which these r's disclose. An r of 0 0.10, 0 0.20, or even 0.30 between the two tests x and y indicates only 1%, 4%, and 9% respectively of the variance of y accounted for by x. At the other extreme, r is equal to 90 and 99 indicate 81% and 98% respectively of the variance in y accounted for by x. Dear students, we are going to discuss the effect of origin and unit upon correlation coefficient. The value of R is invariant under transformations of unit and R origin. The correlation coefficient does not change if both distributions is increased or multiplied by a constant. The result has important implications for the use of correlation coefficient. It leads us to conclude it does not matter if the measurement is in feet or inches, minutes or seconds units or dozens. The correlation 
between the variables will be the same. This quality of R gives it a large range of applications. While working with large values in the calculation of R by Raskor method, it would always be advisable to subtract a constant from all the scores. It would help avoid working with large numbers. In section 3.4, we are going to discuss the factors influencing the size of the correlation coefficient. The students should be aware of the following factors which influence the size of the correlation coefficient and can lead to misinterpretation. Number one, the size of R is very much dependent upon the variability of measured values in the correlated sample. The greater the variability, the higher will be the correlation, everything else being equal. Number two, the size of R is altered when researchers select extreme groups of subjects in order to compare these groups with respect to certain behaviors. Selecting extreme groups on one variable increases the size of R over what would be obtained with more random sampling. Number three, combining two groups which differ in their mean values on one of the variables is not likely to faithfully represent the true situation as far as the correlation is concerned. Number four, addition of an extreme case and conversely dropping of an extreme case can lead to change in the amount of correlation. Dropping of such a case leads to reduction in the correlation while the converse is also true. Now we are going to discuss section 3.5 which is on assumptions underlying the product moment correlation. Pearson's product moment R is based on some assumptions which must be fulfilled before its use is made. These assumptions include linearity of regression. It means that the trend of relationship between the two variables be rectilinear. This can be determined as a rule by inspection of the scatter diagram. The distribution of cases within the correlation diagram appears to be elliptical without any indication of a definite bending of the ellipse. The chances are that the relationship is rectilinear. In case of curvature of regression, correlation ratio instead of product moment R as a measure of relationship would be more appropriate. Curvilinearity of regression can be eliminated by transformations to binomial or to an approximately normal form. Pearson's R does not assume that the distribution of the two variables should be normal. The form of distributions may vary. So long as they are fairly symmetrical and unimodal, even rectangular distributions can be used. Many other circumstances affect the correlation coefficient. Among these may be mentioned sampling error and errors of measurement. Thank you very much.